What's up everybody, I am Jesse, or Game Over Jesse as some of you all may know me, and here with me for the Zelda mailbag is the awesome and amazing Miss Click. So we are here for the Zelda mailbag, where we answer questions sent in from viewers like yourself. They don't necessarily have to be Zelda related, they could be Nintendo, gaming, in general. Whatever questions you may have, we will go through and answer them, but sometimes, like this time, we have so many questions we can't get through absolutely every single one of them mm -hmm. so if you would like to have your question guaranteed to be featured on the podcast and have your name shouted out and your question read and answered by myself daniel who isn't here miss click or any of the other awesome guests that we have on every week because we try to have a different guest every single week you can go to patreon.com slash game over jesse and just for one dollar, you can have your question guaranteed to be featured on the show. But not only do you get that, you get a lot of other cool stuff that you can check out while you are there. At certain tiers, you can even be a guest on the podcast like we've had before. Yeah. So if you've ever wanted to be on a video with one of your favorite YouTube channels, not that that would be me, but you can do it. Head over to Patreon. And you have your own Patreon as well, don't you, Miss Click? Do you? Yes? No? I do, I do, I do. Yes. And what kind of stuff can people get from your Patreon? We have a lot of cool, actually, like, hangouts. We we do video calls. We do polls for what direction you want to see the channel going as well. And currently, we are starting the cosplay journey once again. So I'm finally getting back into my costume making. So it's very exciting. So, yeah, you'll be getting costume cosplay awesome. stuff. So previously we had Spawn Wave or John from Spawn Wave, mm -hmm. but he had to leave uh, before we got to the mailbag. But he was on for all of the news, so please go and check that out if you're a fan with him. This is just a one-on-one -on -one with Miss Click and I, but we also have a lot of awesome people in the chat watching live, which we will try mm -hmm. to end the podcast with a couple of questions from the people in the chat. So you're not left out as well. Uh, these questions are all curate curated from Twitter, YouTube, Discord, and Patreon. So again, so many questions, so short time. But our first question comes from our Patreon supporter, Ashley, who asks, Miss Click, Spawn Wave, Game Over Jesse, who do you think is the best champion, and why is it Rivali? Ooh. <laughs> Ashley. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, so, uh, Miss Click, do you want to go ahead and start this? Who's your favorite champion? Uh, my favorite champion, um, it's tough, dude. I want to say, Darut became so much more endearing. I want to say Urbosa because she's, like, mom, and she's just so cool. But I also really, I think I love Mifa, like, her story and, like, getting to know her more through just everything, like... Her being an older sister and a daughter and, you know, like a princess all at the same time. Mm -hmm. I, I think to me, even though it's tragic, like I think Mifa is my favorite. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I would have to go with Mifa. Um, she, she was the center of the meme world for a while. I think that was just Aww. everyone's favorite. <laughs> but yeah. over time, especially because of the DLC, the, the relationship that she has with her with little brother yes with sidon yeah is it sidon sidon i don't know how to pronounce it but the the relationship she has makes me an even bigger fan of hers so yeah i i would have to go with mifa as well but ashley who asked the question originally everyone knows her in the discord group as uh what was it rivali's waifu so <laughs> ashley <sighs> Yeah, all right, so uh, you can go through this list, misclick, and pick out yeah. your question that you would like to answer. But while you do that, I'll go ahead and ask this next question from, sure. let's see here. Hmm. Should have actually looked through this before. Uh, <laughs> so Patreon questions always come first, and then we just go through the rest to pick some. Yeah. All right. So Thomas Armstrong from Twitter, uh, at Tom Skydive, asks, 
Breath of the Wild Link in Smash. What do you expect for a weapon set? What will will we have runes and champion abilities? I can imagine Rivali and Ur Urbosa coming to my aid, especially if it has no hookshot for ledge grabs. Zero mentions of Metroid, Yoshi, or Labo in the direct. Are they waiting for E3? Mm. So, um, I think we'll see more of Metroid and everything at E3. But uh, Spawnwave was saying earlier he doesn't expect it to actually come out this year. So, right? Yeah. Uh, but what are what are your hopes for Breath of the Wild Link and Smash? Do you think he'll get any of the champion abilities? Like, <sighs> instead of going into just a bubble whenever he guards, do you think it'll be? Like Daruk's protection that keeps getting I weaker. I think that'd be really bubble. cool. Yeah, if, if they're you know really want to make this one, you know, if we're thinking about this, might go out with a bang and being one of the last installments. Um, I would say you know like doing something specific like that would be really cool. I mean, granted, how much attention would they pay to other characters? You know, yeah. if they're putting that much attention to Link, how many for the other characters would they? And and then also, I'd love to see appearance of runes. Like, yeah. the runes in general would be so cool, you know? Or you think of, like, an up the attack for Link, you know, instead of him spinning his sword, you know, have him use Rivali scale, you know? Or uh, have, like, a charged shot, you know, for, for Link, have, you know, Urbosa's Fury, have a small radius mm -hmm. on that. Like, that would be so, so cool. Yeah. Um, you know, things like when you, Miscarys, though, might be OP. <laughs> when you jump up and do the spin attack to do, like, the second or the third jump, whatever it is, instead of it just being the spin attack... I thought it would be cool if whenever you did that, if they did sort of uh, like Rivali's Gale to where it's right, not just yeah. like Link does the spin attack, but it's not necessarily the spin attack that lets him do an extra jump. It's right. Rivali's Gale while he's mm -hmm. doing the spin attack that lets him do yeah. it. That way they yeah. can incorporate those different things. But then it's like Mifa's Grace. I'm not really sure how that would work. Yeah, they like, might not be able to. Yeah. I mean, it could be like an ult if they were doing a really cool ult. We were talking, actually, we were talking on my stream the other day. If, if Link had a, a new, like, ultimate smash, like, what would he be in? We we're talking about, like, having, like, a the four, you know, guardians coming in and then, like, all the, the, the beams come in, you know, <laughs> just like a center axis point, you know, like, how cool would that be? Or, like, oh, for Ganondorf, yeah. you know, to have, like, his Ganon, his new Ganon form and, like, shoot a giant laser across the screen. Like, it'd be really cool. Or Zelda to do, like, that whole orb thing that she does. Yeah, dude. Really cool. Like, Smash is one of those you could just totally, <laughs> like, imagine your mindsets, and there's yeah. no limit. A lot of interesting stuff there. We, we could definitely talk about it on and on. We talked about Smash Brothers recently as a topic mm -hmm. on its own, so you can go to a previous video and watch that if you would like. But we have to get through this mm -hmm. as fast as yes. possible. So, Miss Click, do you have any questions that stood out to you? Oh, yeah. The one, and this is this is pretty good to me, um... Hypersonic06 asked today, he said, in Twilight Princess, after the fight with Ganondorf, Xanth snaps... Is this from Twitter? Ganon or... Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I don't have... I don't see any Patreon questions listed on at least my version. Um, it said, Xanth snapped Ganondorf's neck and then a Twilight Princess. How did he snap his neck? Uh, it's under Discord, sorry. Okay. Um, he added you, though. So how did he snap his neck, though? That's like That was a good question. Like yeah. It so was very symbolic, but my... what do you think? My thought on this is that, um, and you, you kind of see this in movies and anime and stuff, whenever huh. the henchman fails the master, the master gets so disappointed that he just kills him. Like a Dragon Ball Z reference, because uh, there's the Goku statue there. Um, <laughs> during the original uh, first season of Dragon Ball Z, when Goku is fighting Nappa and Vegeta, uh, I think it's Vegeta that actually kills Nappa. If I'm remembering correctly, because Nappa fails mm -hmm. and he's like begging Vegeta or something to stop. It's been a while since I watched it and uh, for failing him, Vegeta just blasts Nappa and kills him and then everyone else is like really shocked and surprised by it. Yep. And then you see like Frieza killing some of his own henchmen as well so like there's different things going on where it's like you fail the person who you're supposed to be helping out and because they're evil you're evil they just kill you instead of doing whatever and i think it was just a situation <laughs> like that like ganondorf gave zant the power that he had to take over the twilight realm and then start taking over hyrule that way 
it could possibly bring back Ganondorf from the Twilight Realm or wherever he was sealed. And Mm -hmm. whenever Ganondorf was released, he's seen that Zent failed. And it's like, I gave you all this power. You failed me. So to make sure that you don't fail me again, I'm just going to kill you. So that was just my thing. Like him snapping his neck was Ganondorf just being like at the very last moment that he could just killing Zant. Uh, but th- that's just my thoughts. Uh, I'm sure there's tons of theories about this. It could have just been Zant being the weird person that Zant is. Because Zant's, yeah. Zant's weird. He, he I thought, I, I, him, yeah. both weirdos. Yeah, for real. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, what, what, what's your headcanon for this? Well, it was just weird because you think back, you know, to that that moment of, God, I've played the end of Twilight Princess, like, too much. I have everything memorized about it. But as far as, like, you know, when, when he's standing there with the sword in him and he's standing there, you know, like, dying or whatever, and you, you, you hear, like, a very eerie, you know, vocal music, you know, and then you look over and you see Zant. It's almost like, in a way, because you feel like uh, Zant, in a way, was was betrayed by Ganondorf, uh, in a sense. I, I think almost uh, they they give you the perspective. Oh, thank you. They give you they they give you the perspective that um, Zant, you know, like he was given the power to kill Ganondorf. Like uh, instead of just the sword being the one responsible for killing him, I, I feel like wherever Zant was sent, wherever Midna, you know, killed him, and he was he, you know, like went to when she like ripped him apart. Like where did he go? I don't know. But wherever he was, I feel like he had dominion to finally be like, "You're dead either way." But I'm gonna pull the final plug. It's really interesting. That was a really good question when I saw that. I was like, "Ooh, got me thinking." All right. Well, we have a few minutes yep. left here so uh this one comes from discord as well i believe comes from the link who says game over jesse and king bergerson uh what zelda game was the most impactful on your life like what type of special meaning did that one zelda game have on your life that you will remember for a long time uh for me i would say almost each zelda game that i played comes at a very special moment for me mm-hmm. um yeah. ocarina of time was the well it and majora's mask was there when i was in like elementary school and middle school mm-hmm. coming home yep. uh it was always watch toonami and then play <laughs> nintendo 64 <laughs> so they were there yeah. with me for that wind waker my first real breakup when i was in like eighth grade uh over the summer mm-hmm. wind waker helped me get through that because instead of having to think about oh this girl cheated on me because i was in eighth grade and she was in eighth grade and that's what you know young love i guess even though it wasn't really all my heart but but anyways uh, wind waker was my way to escape from that and kind of uh get my mind off of it uh twilight princess came at uh, another time when there was some other personal stuff that i won't mention but it helped me through that skyward sword came when i was like my first job in the game industry, I put that in quotes, mm-hmm. was writing for a uh, Zelda website. And it was uh, Skyward Sword playing through it. <clears throat> and the build up to Skyward Sword was my first introduction to the online Zelda community. And then mm-hmm. Breath of the Wild came when, like, because of Breath of the Wild. I've met Miss Click. I've met uh, Gibbs, Ashley, RPG, all the people in the chat, Holly, Daniel, uh, all these awesome, wonderful people. Uh, None of them, I would have met none of them or even know they existed or probably just been like a stalker friend, stalker fan, sorry, watching on Twitch. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, so like I would just be with the people is just like watching on Twitch while I'm playing along or something like that. I would have never actually been able to meet them. So all of the Zelda games, in one way or another, has like helped me through some personal moments. Yeah. Uh, but what about you, yeah. Miss Click? Um, I definitely, I actually, I'm glad that you brought up. You know, like you can recall parts of your life where each game, you know, touched your life. For me, it definitely is like I remember the first time. I got my hands on each game, you know, where was I in life and how have I changed since then? You know, and I feel like even Zelda's gonna continue to impact my life for as long as it comes out. 
thinking back, where was I last time and how have I changed since then? Yeah. Um, but I think for me, the one that's probably changed my life the most, besides Ocarina of Time being my first experience, of there are games that aren't just, you know, run and guns and there aren't just games that are collect the most bananas that you can. You know, it was it was generally like there's a heart and story behind it. So Ocarina of Time really opened my eyes to a depth of when you complete a game and you're crying because, like, <laughs> you see how the world, you know, is like you made it a better place. It, for me as a kid, it was like, you can be that too. You know, you can make that world a better place too. And it might not always seem like it, but good will win. Um, but probably Skyward Sword um, is probably the most impactful in my life in the sense that I think not only was the most expressive link, I believe, that we've seen uh, the entire series, it's the most, like, genuine storyline of, you know, love can transcend any type of relationship. You know, like, genuinely do the best you can to help other people. But then, you know, like, when you truly love someone, it's, you know, sacrificing your own interests or sacrificing what you thought you'd be doing in your life, you know, to to help, you know, save someone or to help show someone that you love, you know, and that's through actions and selfless, you know, acts and Link constantly being too late, you know, to be there for Zelda and you see it in his eyes and, you know, when Zelda, you know, goes to sleep and Link's crying, like, I cried and I always narrate those and I could not narrate those, like, two, three sentences that she says right before she gets in Christmas and it was, like, so hard and then with Fi, you know, like, right at the end, you know, of, of her just being like, I think I have, you know, discovered what you humans call happiness. Yeah. It's like, I was not ready for that. So many people, you know, like, were so shallow with Fi, and then to see her story arc. I consider her story arc a major, like, pivot point for me, much like Prince Zuko was in, you know, the Avatar Last Airbender series. So oh, I think I for me, Avatar. Skyward Sword. Yeah, I think for me, it definitely was Skyward Sword because it just, it was so deep, um, despite its bright colors. All right. So. Well, it is now uh, time for the podcast to end, but Miss Click, I ask you, if you have the time, could we do three more questions really fast? I'm good with that. So yep. we can uh, get some from the chat for... Yes. There's actually a lot of people that tuned in this time. I think it got up to like mm -hmm. 70 or 80 people at one yeah, point. Yeah, we're sitting up high. Let's yeah. See you. So right now there are 50 of you in the chat. Go ahead and give us your questions in the chat. We will pick one more from the list that we already have, and then we will get two questions from anyone in the chat. So, Miss Click, go ahead, pick out one more question, since you are our guest from uh, either the YouTube, Discord, and everyone who is watching, get your questions ready, post them. After we're done with this question, okay. we will go through and pick out questions from the live chat. And the people mm. watching the YouTube video, mm. if you comment your questions in the comments below, you will have your questions answered next time. Mm -mm -mm. Right. Oh, we'll do this because I know we're wanting to go somewhat quick. Okay. Uh, I just pretty much, I just pretty much answered it, but it's uh, on the sheet. It's from Key of Time, um, yes. and this is a Discord question. And it's, it says, "Who are Ooh, your favorite Key companion of time characters?" Time is actually Patreon Lord. supporter as well. So yeah, his Key question. Time, shout out. Woo. Yes. Your favorite companion characters in Zelda lore, Jesse. Ooh.